welcome guys so welcome to framework section so in this section we will try to understand all cypress best practices in writing tests and we will also try to make it more optimized on framework standards and at the same time i will be picking one real time e-commerce app to show end to end exercises by writing few automation tests okay so first of all let's try to go through the agenda what we are going to learn as part of this phase of framework learning we will first see what are test hooks in cypress and how to configure them thereafter we will understand data driven testing with fixtures like how to drive the data from external files into our test cases and we will look into the cypress commands which we can build our own customized till now we have seen the commands which given by cypress right so if you want to use any reusable utilities you can convert them as a cypress commands i will talk that when we discuss about this customizing thing and next is a parameterized test when you have the test data to run your test with multiple data sets then we will implement parameterizing for that specific test case from your json file and we will look into how to debug your test there is also a method which will help us to pass your test in the middle and you can just debug how it's going through okay and of course the uh what do we say the common and most used design pattern for any framework automation tools is the page object design pattern so we will look into this and separate objects from our test case by neatly consolidating them into classes in page object pattern thereafter i will just go and explain few configuration changes in cypress.json and how to update them in from this particular file this is also one of the important concept to understand and next i will show how to find screenshots when test failed and where to find video recording for all your test cases okay for every test there will be one video recorded we will look and see where to find all them and then i will show you the new concept of cypress dashboard so this is used when you have a number of test cases and this dashboard will help you to run all test cases together and there is one consolidated place where you can see tests video recording and screenshots this is very cool future of cypress so you will really impressed once i teach cypress dashboard and finally we will wrap by understanding few environmental variables of cypress and when to use it and then generating a reports for all your test cases and then just integrate your whole framework with jenkins continuous integration and we'll wrap it there okay so that's our agenda once we are done with this section i will then explain how to do api testing with cypress in the next section but now let's focus and finish off all these validations and then finally let's integrate this project to jenkins and run in our ci environment so that's our goal okay so firstly let's try to understand what are these test hooks and where it will help in our framework building so cypress provides us few test hooks but these test hooks are taken from um, mocha testing framework okay as cypress is supporting them we can automatically use the hooks presented by mocha so basically these are helpful to set conditions that you want to run before your test it's like annotations if you are aware of test ng in selenium there is annotation called before test and after test right so this is the before hook if you declare this before function in your test so whatever code you write in this function will execute before all test cases 
in that particular block okay similarly after this will run after all the test cases execution completed so you can use before test to initialize any test data things or to invoke the browser or hit the url all these things you can put it in your before block because this run before any test execution and in the after block you can actually ask to delete catchy or close the browser but in cypress there is no concept of closing browser as it will automatically close once the test is done okay maybe you can uh, delete the test data whatever you created in your browser okay and before each so what is the difference between before and before each so if you remember i told you that one describe may have multiple it blocks so this is one spec file and you can create one more it block as well so this is a test suite and this test suite may have multiple test cases that means multiple it blocks so when you write before this method will execute before all it blocks but when you declare code in before each function this method will execute before each it block that means if there are totally four it blocks this before each will execute four times before executing that specific it block but whereas this before annotation only execute once before all the four it block started execution okay so if you use all these in your test first will execute before because that should run before anything thereafter it will run before each because we were saying to run each and every method before each it block and then it block will start running once that it test case is done then it will execute after each because after each executes after each and every it block once this is done then it will finally execute this method this just run after every test is done execution similarly you can see the order of hook and test execution as follows it only run once and after also run once but before each runs before each and every it block so right now in our test there is only one it block so writing before or before each doesn't matter much okay if you have multiple it blocks then you can utilize this all right so let's copy this before method and i'll firstly create a new test or you can say test test a framework nice you can just copy this describe block or i can use everything and then change the syntax all right so i can remove all the code which is present inside it perfect now where will your before block goes it will go inside describe but outside of it block do remember that nice so let me explain you what how to drive the test data from your fixture file and that all setup i will write it in the before block because it is recommended to um build all setup related things in your before method that's why we say right setup and tear down all tear down methods should go in the after block and all setup methods should go in before block so i will first create some sample test by writing two or three steps and then we will actually drive the data what we need for the test from our specific json file which is fixtures so let me talk about that later before that 
we will just pick that application what we are planning to automate and then write some basic steps for it okay so rahul city academy.com angular practice so this is the page and you can actually shop items by selecting this link and you can add items to cart and then you can go to checkout page and make sure the items are displayed and the total is matching and then you can check out and select the country where you want to deliver this so, and then purchase so this is what this website gives us a basic functionality so but there is a lot you can automate from this side okay so let's start by entering name and then selecting the gender okay so we will actually write these two steps and then try to take this name and gender from our external file okay so firstly you need to come to this website gy.wizard Okay. Right, you have name attribute which will identify it uniquely, I guess. So let me write CSS and confirm. Input tag name, attribute is name, value of it is also name. Oh, two elements matching so I would not prefer using this name attribute because this is one and this is one so two attributes are matching with name so in that case you can go with unique CSS generated by um, that particular site from uh, using either Cypress or your crow path let me close this browser So only way now here is to write CSS using tag names by traversing from parent to child. Okay. Form input dot form control. It's still four elements. So input control, then we can say nth child of one. Perfect. It's matching now one element. See by dot get. And if you want to type something inside it, it's type, right? Type name is some Bob. Perfect. Next is to select female from gender. And this is select tag and comes as a static drop down. And you know how to handle select drop downs cy dot first get that css which is select and from there use a select method and select your female okay so now let's run this test and see if it's selecting the name and the radio button so once we are good with this in our next lecture let's pull up this bob and female from here and drive it from the external file so that's overall concept what I'm trying to achieve. So let me save this. And somehow I am an impression that this might break because the class names will change based upon you enter input. Now for example you see that ng touched have been changed to ng30. So angular is so um, consistent but regarding class names it will load dynamically and specifically when you work on these ng classes you should be careful so i think in this case better we will go with name attribute this might work but again when you manipulate that edit box then the behavior might change and class name may also get changed so earlier when we started with this we got two matching elements right 
so we will do nth child on this because they cannot manipulate our name attribute angular have developed in such a way that on fly it manipulates class attribute to change the behavior of your edit box but they will not touch the name attribute okay so right now it will return two names but when i select nth child of one it is selecting the bottom one probably when i say nth child of two it is selecting the first one so that means this edit box is present on the second index okay so you know this right we just did initially so i will go with this css which is reliable and which will not break our application so use double quotes here okay now let's go to our cypress dashboard and see how it's going nice so it have entered bob and it has entered female in the gender okay so if you don't want to have a headache of writing your customized css then you have this just spy on this and this is the css you can copy and put it here so you need not worry about deriving all this all right so in the next lecture let's not put the data here and let's drive it from our external file okay thank you